I hope you guys are doing great today. I've been thinking a lot about this race thing going on in the States and here. And something occurred to... <clears throat> so, hi guys. I hope you're doing well today. I've been thinking about a lot about this race thing that's been going on in the States and here. And so much has been said about it already. But something has occurred to me. While we, while black people were abused and horribly treated and forced to do um, a lot of things that we should not have been forced to do, been forced to work in deplorable conditions. Um, we were, in the States, we were, as black people, just treated so horribly and so deplorably physically um, that it, it's so indescribable, the pain. And when um, slavery in the States was finally, quote unquote, abolished it wasn't mentally abolished it was physically abolished but not mentally abolished so it it led into segregation white um white only washrooms and black only washrooms and fighting for integration down in the states and when I think of things like the Underground Railroad and Harriet Tubman and Rosa Parks and all those wonderful people and all and even the um, some of the inventions that were made um, by black people like the washing machine and uh, insulin and all of that those things that were um, contributed by black people in society. Um, it is totally uh, despicable that we we didn't get the credit for it and still don't in some cases. We all know about the abuse that black people su suffered physically uh, in the States um, more than here, but here as well. Um, it's just very sad for all of us. But what occurred to me, which was staggering, it was staggering what occurred to me, is that while we were, while we were physically enslaved, physically chained, physically abused and told that we were nothing as black people, our, our Caucasian counterparts were, were taught that we were nothing. So, in a way, we were enslaved physically, but they were enslaved mentally, emotionally. And that mental, because if I think about it, uh, go with me for a second before you turn me off. Um, they were told by their white parents that we were ends and we were worth nothing and we were all of this. And they saw their parents go to white only washrooms and they only had um, white only stuff and that's what they were taught as a society back then. When you you teach a people that they are only three fifths, I think, in the state of person, it does something to their self esteem. But as well it did some things to the to the white consciousness too that they were they were they were not taught 
anything differently. They were not, they didn't know anything differently because that's what they saw their parents do. Just like we saw our parents um, work in the fields of slaves, just as just like we saw our parents get beaten and sold off, and not our parents, but just as much as black people saw their relatives get beaten and sold off and treated in deplorable conditions and um, be treated no more than an animal. They saw their um, relatives um, be the ones beating the slaves and be the ones who set up the laws. Um, be the ones who perpetuated this. So I think in a way, we both struggled. Um, they, we struggled physically and they struggled emotionally. And the way to stop this, I believe, is to take a step back and really say, yeah, we're not the only ones who struggled, um, who struggled with this. When you can, when you can, um, like I know for, in the consci consciousness of society, um, it is harder for a person of color or Spanish person to get the opportunities. And I'm not saying that in the, is it, it is impossible. I'm saying that we have to work harder. Um, and that's just a reality, even here in Canada. Um, we have to work harder for what we have and what we've achieved. And, but what we don't understand is that the, our Caucasian counterparts have suffered with it too. They've suffered with our vitriol as well. They've s s suffered uh, with our hatred and our mistrust. I think as both cultures, we need to understand that we need to uh, learn from each other. We need to uh, embrace each other and and realize that as colored people, we're not the only ones who were, were uh, ab abused and taught wrong because they were taught wrong, but in a different way. They were taught wrong. We were abused physically while they were abused mentally. We got what we got what we got abused physically by whips and chains while they were enslaved mentally. We were enslaved physically while they were enslaved mentally and what we both need to do as cultures and is say that was then let's let's get together and i i know it's i know it's not going to be easy but we we both cultures need to say humans started this so humans can end it. And I believe that since humans started it, humans can end it. And I believe that it is possible. We just need to unlearn what we learned. Um, I was um, talking with some friends the other day about Black Lives Matter. And I I was unclear about 
the whole movement until I heard John Grace say, we don't, we don't mean that only Black Lives Matter. We just mean that Black Lives Matter as well. And that brought clarity to my heart. But um, saying that, however, I, I was thinking of uh, Christina Grimmie, which for those of you who don't know, was the voice um, contestant a few seasons ago, ago who was gunned down at her concert. Uh, 22 years old, she was gunned down. Uh, a gunman came into her concert and shot her. And I began to think of her mother and her brother, and I began to think of Jane Kreba, a 16-year-old white girl um, a few years ago who was shot at the Eaton Center. I, I believe it was by a stray bullet when she was shopping with her friend. So although, and I had this very unique dream where um, George Floyd's brother um, met with Christina Grimmie's brother and they talked about the pain that they both felt, the pain of losing their siblings, just, just the utter devastation. And what what people what people began to um, what people fail to see is pain is pain, um, regardless of what color you are. But but the thing about um, being black sometimes is sometimes it takes longer for justice to be done and i think in the consciousness of black and brown people is we're tired of being considered second class citizens sometimes not always and we just want to be we treat equally and it was so it was so moving this dream because what the person did was get all all of these people together and they put um, the opposite color person in they they put um they were all split up into groups and the opposite color person was the focus of the group. So um, they put all these black people in a group and they put this uh, white, white person like who was shot in the center of the group and s said to their family member, tell me about um, so-and-so. I think it was Christina Grimmie. Yeah, they said, tell me about Christi Christina, and as her brother and her family began to talk, um, it was just, the pain was the same, and it was just so beautiful. I'm not, I'm not describing it well, but, but we began to see that whether white or black, the pain is the same and yes and yes culturally we have some very unique challenges and it'll take some unlearning on our part and Caucasian people's part to start a new day but I'm so glad these conversations are happening on my social media I I posted tons of conversations about this issue because I believe um, I believe what's so unique about this time they said racism has been around for generations yes it has um, since the 1600s 
Um, but it, for some reason, the George Floyd murders got national attention and Caucasian pastors, Caucasian people began to speak up. So I think it's a positive thing towards change um, to, um, so we can see a day without racism. Uh, let me try and explain what this dream was. Okay, there was this person in a room um, that, and this person, there was a white family who had lost someone to um, gun violence and a black family who had lost someone to gun violence and and the and there were two groups a group of black people and a group of white people and the group of black people's job was to find out about the life of this 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 um white person who was murdered and vice versa and they under and they found out the two mothers found out that their pain was the same yes black and brown people have unique challenges but we have to understand that pain is pain and sometimes some people um, wear their pain as a, as a badge and it's not meant to be a badge. It's meant to be something you acknowledge and get through. And I, I really think the Lord is calling us to understand that to to understand that although yes we were enslaved physically as black and brown people but they were enslaved mentally as Caucasian people and they were hurt mentally by their thought processes where while we were hurt physically so hurt people hurt people and because everyone's hurt no sometimes no one seems to be listening our job is to listen to each other not listen to judge but listen to understand and listen to be empathetic and you don't have to have have lived through someone's experience to um, be empathetic with them. You just have to have a human heart to just reach out and say, I haven't lived your experience, but teach me. That's what Joel Osteen, Osteen said. That's what Stephen Furtick said. Um, they said, teach me, teach me what you, what you went through. And I think that's a step in the right direction. And I think I'm optimistic to say that we can have a world without racism uh, because God did create it, humans did. And if humans created it, humans can stop it. Um, Call me an idealist if you want, but I believe that uh, racism is from hell. Racism was a way to keep us both down, not just black people, but to keep white people down as well in different ways. Both, I said all this to say that both cultures were affected in different ways by slavery. Both cultures were affected in different ways by segregation. Not just the black culture, but the white culture was affected too. 
not physically, but emotionally and spiritually. I just think, I just can't help but think, if racism didn't enter the picture, what discoveries were not made because um, black people weren't let in? What children weren't born because black people and white people weren't allowed to get married? What was missed out on because the richness of, of uh, the black society wasn't allowed to flourish? And what did they miss out on? What friendships weren't formed? Uh, what discoveries weren't made? So we didn't only lose out. We, we were, we as black people weren't the only ones enslaved. They were enslaved as well. And the Lord is calling for a dismantling of mindset. Uh, a de-enslaving of, of mindsets um, and just utter freedom. The blame game has got to stop and we've got to understand our ancestors did it. You hurt as black people but we hurt too. We lost out too on the beautiful minds that we could have had, on the beautiful discoveries together we could have made if that hadn't turned out into the picture. And we both lost out. We lost out as, as a society. And we both have both cultures all cultures have to come together and say that's what they did but we can change it we can change it now and we can we can one step at a time it's not going to happen overnight but I believe it's going to happen one step at a time. Thanks, guys. I'll see you later. Take care. Bye.